Our purpose is to offer help to families in the area of budgeting and planning. Budgeting as it relates to financial issues and planning as it relates to meal preparation, purchases, and other short-term concerns. Helping families understand corporate power as it relates to purchasing in order to bring savings to the family. Experiencing and expanding the corporate power to joint ventures that teach skills and living such as home repair, bartering, seeking, and utilizing opportunities that make dreams come true. Assist families in obtaining knowledge and awareness of all human resources and services available to them. Sponsor seminars that coordinate various services to enhance and assist the family in their ever-changing and growing needs. Hello, my name is Karen Cheatham, Secretary Treasurer of Psy Corporation. We are home based in Muskegon, Michigan, but our outreach extends beyond that. Under the current economic climate, we're looking at how we can help individuals with their budgeting to learn how to live on less. And that's going to be a requirement very soon, whether we like it or not. So it's best that we prepare ourselves on how we can live on less, how we can work together collectively to do some things as it relates to purchasing and meal planning, how we can plan ahead so that we're not caught having to make decisions that we really don't want to make. But if we plan ahead, then we can take the opportunity to do the things that God has called us to do, and that is live by his word. There's about two or three segments that we go through, and the first one is the most important one as far as we're concerned. We are a Christian-based organization, however, we don't impose our beliefs on anyone, but we realize that if you're really going to live in an economy that has very short status as it relates to job opportunities and growth, we have to learn to live on less. And the Bible gives us that opportunity to get our minds in focus so that we can live on less. Let's move to our slides. First, renew your mind by establishing new objectives and goals that yield a different outcome. If you keep doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome, that's going to be a problem. But we have to renew our minds and we start with a biblical presence of that because the Lord is the only one that can change our thought process and guide us to a very productive life even in this economic situation. Not what, not why. It's not what we spend, but why we spend. And whatsoever we do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Our job is to be free to help others. If you are in bondage, it's impossible for you to be able to help other individuals who are suffering. And the Lord has called us to be instruments to be used to help others. And we're always going to have the poor, but there's always going to be someone with that money availability if you are a good vessel and a good steward of that which the Lord has called you to be. Let's look a little further. What? Why? Let's continue. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is a servant to the lender. When we borrow, what we do is we set ourselves up as a borrower. We become a slave to the one who owns or controls that which he is known to us. And so we're, we're at a point where we may say, I borrow X amount of dollars, but I'm paying so much in interest. And we'll talk about that later as we look at what our credit score looks like and why we're charged so much interest. But if we're going to pay interest on a loan and we have so many other things that are going on in our, in our life, we can't help other individuals. We are called to live free. And that's what the Lord, we're going to talk about that. That's what the Lord would have us to do. Know the word. Honor the word with your substance. That's your possessions. And with the first fruits of all thine increase. Why? So thy barns shall be filled with plenty, and thy presses or thy vats shall burst out with new wine. What he was talking about, if the Lord is first in your life, and you yield all to his will, he will provide what you need and the substance to help other individuals. But if we are selfish and we hold tight to that which we have, and we help no one else, then we're not free ourselves and God is not free to use us in helping other individuals through this situation. Steward. Well the first thing is what is a steward and what is an owner? 
Let's look at that. A steward is one who cares for that which belongs to another and then, until they come to claim it. What is an owner? Well, Psalms 24 and 1 said, The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and the world, and they that dwell therein. So nowhere in that verse do we have ownership. All we can be is stewards. And so if we can't be the owner, stewardship is recorded in Luke. And we're not going to go through that, but we're going to give you those scriptures so you can go back and read it. But the good steward takes care of that which the owner has, and he goes by what the owner says to do with that substance. And so it's not like you can make decisions of your own as to what you do with your finance. I know some people think, well, I got up, I went to work, it's my money, I do what I want. But you are not the owner. You can never own anything because an ownership means you can control. And because you have no total control over that which you have, you can only be a steward. And if you're only a steward, that means you should be willing to obey the owner because the owner is the only one that knows what's happening yesterday, right now, and tomorrow. And our decisions today will affect what we do in our future. Therefore, we need to be good stewards. And you are a steward. Whether you decide to be a steward or not, you can never be the owner. You are a steward. You can be a good steward or a bad steward, but you're still a steward. Let's move forward. Good stewards. To be a good steward is to follow the word. Now, you can't know what God wants you to do unless you're reading his word. First, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, To study to show yourself a prudent to God, a workman that need not to be ashamed to rightly divide the word of truth. That means you need to study the word of God so you know how he wants you to live. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 and 22 says to pray without ceasing. And if it looks like it's wrong, if it has the appearance of evil, we need to flee. So don't be afraid to walk away from a situation. If it looks too good, you need to run away from it. Because if somebody offers you money or offers you an opportunity to become a millionaire, billionaire, and all you got to do is sign this piece of paper right now, you can't wait till tomorrow. Those situations, in our word of God, we know that if you can't wait, and if God hasn't led you, you need not to go there. You need to run. If it looks too good, it probably is too good to be true. And we need to flee. Our responsibility, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. And that's our purpose. We are to be salt and light. If you've ever accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, what you need to know is that we are here to be the salt and to light so that people might come to us to understand how they need to live because we're supposed to be the example that Jesus set on this earth to help people to respond to his word. And God is worthy to receive those blessings and that honor. And that's why we're here. Even in our finance, in every aspect of our life, we are called to glorify God. The seven deadly daily words. And somebody may say they're deadly. Well, they might be deadly because they're going to get rid of the sin. So they're going to they're going to kill this sin. So let's say, yes, Lord. That means we yield every day. Totally say, yes, Lord, whatever your will is, that's what we want to do. What's the next one? Yes, Lord, your will, not mine. And we have to yield our will to his because he's the only one that knows what our future is all about. Your way by the word of God. And that's where we do. We got to read the word. We have to study. We have to pray. Be in his will. Your time. Learn to wait. Don't be impatient. Yes, you ask God for the Maserati, you ask God for the house on the hill, a million dollars in the bank, and a good looking husband, and it hasn't arrived yet, so you go out and do it on your own. When we step out of the will of God and we fail to wait, that's when we get in trouble. Your plan, your plan, follow his path. There are times when we have decided that we want to do things a certain way, but that's not in the plan of God. That's not the plan he has for us. He says, I know the plan I have for you. But if we don't study his word and wait on him, we'll miss those opportunities. You lead. So what we said, yes, Lord, your will, your way, your time, your plan, you lead. That means you want Jesus to direct your life. Well, maybe the plan you want is not the plan that's best for you. But if you learn to wait on Jesus, we guarantee that that's what he offers you. Is that really what you need? The last one, I yield. And that's the hardest part of these seven, seven daily words. I yield, me. Lord, I'm in charge. I know what I want. I know what I need. I got it all planned out. Here's my list. Can you make it happen? No. Let's start again. Yes, Lord, your will, your way. Your time, your plan, you lead, and I yield. So I'm at the bottom, and I say I give all to the cause of Christ. That's how stewardship begins. And before I can help you to budget, we need to have your mind renewed in the fact that you are not the owner. You are a steward. Our budget. Our budget. When you look at your budget, and some of you maybe have never looked at a budget, and so it's hard to set up a budget if you don't know what you're spending. 
And we'll get into that with the second phrase when we talk about budging in itself. But sh your budget shows how much you trust God. It shows how much you follow the word. It shows how much you take care of the business until Christ returns. Remember, you're a steward. So as you're spending money and as you're writing things out, what if you had to stand before God and say, okay, Lord, you provided this money for me and this is what I did with it. But you say, I don't know what I did with it. I, I just spent and I don't keep track of it. But we are responsible to be good stewards. And part of that shows how do we trust God by giving him the first, shows how much we follow the word, that we are accountable, and it shows how much we take care of business until Christ returns. What else? Who are you? Well, this is an interesting question, and I ask many people, who are you? And I ask myself that, who am I? But let me ask, who are you? If you fail to pay your bills on time, and you bring dishonor to Jesus, why? Because you are a what? And what does it say? You are a, I think it's liar, oh, and thief. Whoa, why are you a liar and a thief if you don't pay your bills on time? Well, when you buy something, you make an obligation or a contractual agreement to pay it on a certain time. If you fail to do that and you still have the goods or services, you have broken the contract so that you are a liar and if you never pay for it, you are a thief because you have the services and goods and you didn't pay for them. That kind of action brings dishonor to God and that's not the way we should be living at all. How do you live? You are either a steward of Jesus or a steward of Satan. I mean, there's no demilitarized zone where it's neutral territory. You are one or the other. There is no middle ground. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable and perfect will of God. Why is this verse so important? Because many times we are in debt trying to conform to the world. We want to dress like the world, live like the world and do like the world. And we don't have maybe what the world has. We don't have the backup. We don't have the salary. But yet we want to have this kind of an aura about us that, that tells people we have arrived. And many times we want to dress and look like them and emulate the world and we get into debt because we don't have the money to do it. And so many times we take the chances of taking the rent money, the light gas, food money, and we'll go to a place like a casino and we'll put the money down anticipating we'll get money back in order to take care of our business so we can continue to live outside the will of God. But many times that's what's caused our falter. So he says, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you decide. The Lord makes life simple. We make it complex. We stress over stuff. We love sin. We embrace it and we pay the cost for it. We want to be the owner and do it our way. But when we step outside the will of God, that is the problem. What else do we do? Matthew 5, 13, 16. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. So why aren't you doing your job? Why aren't you doing your job? Hmm. That could be something to think about right there. What are you willing to give up to live debt free? You cannot seek the owner's guidance if you are not sure of your real income expenses and total debt. Do you keep track of your finances? It means every time you get your check, you have X amount of dollars. Do you track how much you spend and why? And I'm, I'm under the, um, how do I say this? I believe, I'm under this strong belief that if people started to track what they spent, they would see where all the extra money is going and nothing is coming in return for that. We had one individual and they had me, I said, track for 30 days. And they came up with this number that they couldn't believe of $600 at McDonald's and they weren't buying stock. Why? Because they never thought about it because it was just $2.99 here, four there, five here. But over the month, of just doing that spending with not thinking about it when you start to track it. You see where that's almost a whole house payment that we have used for fast foods and still weren't filled. Poverty. The desire to please the flesh is costly. No daily devotional time to seek the plan of God. That's costly. Self-centered. It's all about me, myself, and I. Failure to think about or care for those in need, a slave to the system. Those are some of the things that breed poverty. We think this is because I don't have a job, I'm in poverty. But these things, even if you have a job, can put you in poverty because God is not first in your life. 
living without a plan, failure to follow biblical teachings, living the future, buy now, pay with, if and when, loves the creation, that's the stuff more than the creator, allows the world to direct your spending. This causes poverty. I'm never so remiss as individuals who will say, I, I'm going out to eat, but I can't afford it. And they charge on a charge card. They can't pay the minimum balance, and so they're almost paying because they're late, they're not regular and consistent. They're almost past 20% interest on the credit card and buying things that they really can't afford to have because they allow the world to dictate how they do it. Let's break the cycle. Let Jesus set the plan for every decision. Seek the Lord's will on everything, no matter how small. To be a steward is to follow the word of God without question. Faith must be the focus. Your mind and your action must reflect your love for Jesus. And if you really love Jesus, then all of these things have to come into being. We have to place Jesus first and how he told us to live, even in our spending. Breaking the cycle. If you allow the world to block the message of truth, you will always be a slave. You are a slave to Satan when his worldly stuff comes before the Lord. Everything you do is about yourself, me, myself, and I, and God is not centered, then the spending pattern does not reflect that God is using you to glorify Him. Therefore, you're not gonna break the cycle. Little bits of the world. So let's have the question. Do you please the Lord or bring glory to honor to Him in these situations? Because little things add up. The music you allow in your home, and music is expensive, but it also affects the mind because it goes into our brain. Movies that we watch, stuff that we see. I'm amazed how much people pay for, you know, that, that silly idiot box in the cable. Every day watching things that do not reflect God. The speech, all the words we say to and about others, how we dress, what we wear, trying to keep up with the world standards, our attitude about everything. It is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine or anything whereby my brother stumbles or is offended or made weak. So we can't just think about ourselves when we buy and look and do. It's about how we give the example to others about living totally in stewardship by God. It's your choice. And when you stand before Jesus and he said, did you feed the hungry? Give drink to the thirsty, shelter to the homeless, clothes to the naked, visit the sick and visit the prisoners. Did you do those things? And you say, what do you say? I didn't have the money for that. Mm -mm. Jesus said, this is where you spend eternity based upon how you respond to what Jesus has called you to do with that which he's entrusted in your care will determine where we spend eternity. Success, the key to live each day as if it were your last day on earth, now let the Lord set the priorities. Once our mind is set, we are ready to budget. We are ready to plan. We are ready to live on less. Hmm, let's take a break. But brace yourself, there is more to come. And we're gonna really get into budgeting because now our mind is renewed.